I think everything's that's green. That's red. That's red. Yep. Red, red. Oh, well, okay. Tom, thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, that was different. I'm not gonna lie, but, thanks, um, <laughs> yep. I appreciate Same. you guys. Appreciate you. I'll see you around. I'll see you November 30th. David Collins. 30 minutes. Show with David Collins. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of David Collins' 30-minute half-hour show. I'm your host, David Collins, and we have another great episode for you today. Really looking forward to today's guest. We've had a slew of technical issues today, but at least we do have some good news. That's right. 30 minute half hour show. We're going to be talking a little bit about the gas cap criminal there in the future. But it turns out he was just putting all the three, he kept moving it to different tri state areas. And another one he tried there was right here in Iowa, Illinois, and Wisconsin. And we have some news on that about the Jester's Lounge. Speaking of the Jester's Lounge, our guest today might have heard this news already. Jester's Lounge in Dubuque, Iowa has officially closed its doors after three months. That's pretty sad news. Have you heard that, Tom? I did hear that. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. And it really does. It's too bad there. We're going to maybe talk about that probably in the reality show. It's all going to be covered. Are you familiar with David Collins' 30 minute half hour reality show? I am. I watched a, I watched a bunch of your stuff, dude. I, I, I'm all hip and, and up on what you do. So uh, Wow. Well, yeah, of excited. course, I see the backwards hat there. You know, a lot of people, when they come on the show, they wear sunglasses. I'm not sure how many people go with the backwards hat, but that's great so much. I'm glad you become a fan there. The gas cap <laughs> criminal. Yeah. Had at one point, it appears that it was him because somebody went ahead and vandalized the Jester's Lounge. They climbed a window, broke a dart machine, $4,000 in damage while it was closed. A week later, the venue closes. But after that vandalism there, somebody inside found the three from David Collins' 30 minute half hour show. So whoever that person was, we assume that was the gas cap criminal. We have a great show planned for you today, a great guest and some great games. But before we get into that, of course, everybody's favorite segment, color of the day. Today's color of the day, Jester Purple. Purple representing justice, green representing faith, and gold representing power. We picked Jester Purple today, of course, in honor of the closing Jester's Lounge. Maybe the venue will reopen one day with a new vision and a new color. Made up of 73 red, 30 green, and 117 blue, today's color of the day, Jester Purple. Today's sponsor of the show, Max Motors in Manhattan, Kansas. Brought to you by Max Motors. Don't overpay on your next vehicle. Max Motors on Highway 24 in Manhattan. Today's guest right. is Tom Garland. We're going to get right into world news with David Collins. And when we have a guest on the show talking about world news, I like to ask the guest, what do you think about world news this week, Tom? What are you thinking about? I'm thinking probably the whole world is upset that Jester's Lounge is closed. It's big news around the local area. Of course, not exactly world news, but there were a lot of national acts booked, you might say. So that's certainly yeah, big news. What do you think about that? That's too bad. You've performed at the Jester's Lounge. I played the opening weekend there. All the time, that. there's this fade that just likes to be stuck. Is that unclicked now, Matt? Yes. Perfect. It's unclicked. When we think about world news this week, of course, the big news that we hadn't talked about, it's a little old at this point, maybe. Did you see Donald Trump on Joe Rogan's podcast? I did. I watched some of it. I'm not a big Rogan fan or necessarily Trump either, but I watched the uh, I don't really side one way or the other. I, I think that's kind of odd for comics to do, but um, I watched probably 30 minutes of it. Right. Well, it was strange, I would say. How often they talked about the UFC that kept getting brought up, the UFC. What do you yeah, think? I think Trump Unfunny thinks comedian? That he's a UFC fighter. Like, I think that he doesn't, he must not have put together that I think the UFC is like a secondary thing for Rogan, not necessarily yeah. like what he's, you know, he's kind of known for it. Yeah. Well, I, I think know. Donald Trump just wanted to kind of relate there. It's too strange that he didn't talk about comedians there. I did play, yeah. we played a clip on the radio show. Maybe we'll play a clip of that in post there. But we talked about something nobody else is talking about. Trump on Rogan, he kept bringing up his bowel movements. Did you see this? I didn't see that part. What did he What did he say about that? That they were great. He took one in Vegas. Speaking of Vegas, <laughs> you've done a lot of time in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. I performed in Vegas. Saying I did time in Vegas sounds like I was imprisoned there. But I, I right. Did, I well, that's did. true. Do they have a prison yeah. there? You know, but you're also from this Dubuque area, or maybe is it Dubuque that you're from? I'm from Cedar Rapids. Yeah. I see. Well, you know something about the Wallert Eagles. That's a bit of a local story here. Local in Dubuque, Iowa, the Wallert 
Golden Eagles are currently 9-0 and and are eligible to compete for state this year. Did you hear about this? No, that's in football. Right. I think they've ruined it, though. Like, you can be like, can't you be like 5-4 and four and still make the playoffs? Well, I'm not sure, but they're 9-0. Yeah, that's sweet. They're undefeated. That's dope. But They're I just mean pretty they... well. So just a little shout out to that local Dubuque area here. Did you hear about this? The McDonald's quarter pounder mm. and the E. coli being found in some of the quarter pounders. It was something it was 15 new cases identified this week. I looked at a map of it. There was like 26 in Colorado. There was one in Iowa. E. coli, five people were hospitalized so far. This has got to be good for the other businesses surrounding mcdonald's there, some of their competitors so we thought it'd be a good opportunity to come up with a great david collins song parody this week do you like song parodies tom oh, i bet i'm gonna love this one hit me dried a mcdonald's quarter pounder made it halfway down the block got real sick turning green had the pole over quick Praying to that porcelain throne, I gotta puke. I should have gone to Wendy's. Heaven on earth with a slice of cheese. No E. cola and my food very nice. I just know I should have gone to Wendy's. Word. <laughs> They're closing that a great song parody idea because not a lot of people know this. You know, Wendy's burgers never frozen. Yeah, they're closing they a bunch a of Wendy's. Did you see that? What's that? I said they're closing a bunch of Wendy's. Uh oh. They're closing like something like 150 locations. Really? Yeah, 100%. What do you read about that? What did I read about that? In the Certainly. world news, dude. Probably probably not getting all my world news from the David Collins show, but I did. Well, but see people that do, do stay pretty informed. We like to keep some. How about this story here, of course? Google responds, or Google reportedly owes the Kremlin. Russia, mm. more than two undecillion ruples. It's a two followed by 36 zeros. That's a lot of nuts. <laughs> well, they're making some of it back today because I had to download Chrome to get on this thing. Oh, well, they'll get some of that. Well, they, of course, they're not paying it, it seems like, but it is a lot. It's, it's actually 20 billion trillion trillion. What do you think about that? I think that is a lot of money i think i don't know that's like when you go to mexico like they're like you know it'll be like that's 200 pesos and you're like i'm not giving you 200 dollars. and then they're like it's 250 and you're like right. oh yeah I'll, okay so maybe oh, that's it's a good point i don't know what russian money converts to us at maybe that's not that much well that's a pretty brilliant way to think about that maybe it's just a few million dollars yeah or like 10 bucks and some e coli six zeros they need, they maybe, if that's the case, they need a new currency. 36 zeros. Are you a sports fan? Oh, I can be. I, I really follow the Dubuque Waller Eagles. That sort oh, well, of that's, that's the pretty local. That's, that's interesting. Money. If you are following that, I'm talking more about the World Series. Oh, uh, no. I watched that. I saw that walk off. Um, what was it? Walk off Grand Slam. It's pretty crazy. Freddie Freeman game one. Yeah, that was nuts. Wow. Well, I'm not too familiar. You know, I was just watching that last game there. It was a five to nothing lead. The New York Yankees commits three errors, loses their lead in the game. It was a center fielder. Aaron Judge drops the ball. There was a ground ball to the right side that the pitcher didn't cover. Just horrible. Did you watch that? I did not, no. Well, I have one thing to say to the Yankees. <laughs> and that was World News with David Collins. Our guest today is a talented and well-rounded performer located here in Iowa. He's worked all over the state and country, spending most of his comedy career or much of his comedy career in Las Vegas and Chicago. He's worked great rooms like the 503 in Iowa Falls, Jester's Lounge in Dubuque, Classic Event Center in Cedar Rapids, the Blackhawk Room in Moline, which some people who know from the reality show, I've actually done a show in the Blackhawk Room there. Bard's Garrett's Comedy Club in the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, the Psalm in Burlington, HD Tavern in Holman, and many more. He's not only a stand-up comedian, but actor, producer, writer, and director in many films. He's acted in great movies like Up on the Wooftop, Bros, <laughs> and Spiral. Produced projects like Don Zilla's Stand-Up Showcase, Headstrong, Huskies, 
Rudy's, and also recently filmed, directed, and edited a great documentary, Arcade Gamer, The True Story. Most, most recently, he directed and wrote and appeared in his own comedy special, Tom Garland Selling Out, which can be found on Tubi. Make some noise for our great guest today, Tom Garland. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. And thank you, Tom, for coming on the show. We really appreciate it because it was funny that we had you directly after Tom Myers. I did want to talk a little about this. You had a great story about Tom Myers that I had caught. Maybe I'm going to have to pull out of you today. But we had Tom Myers on the show last week, and he said, oh, Tom Garland, well, he's much more successful than I am, but we did a few shows together years and years ago. But what yeah. an interesting characterization, characterization, somebody that I run into sometimes, being more successful than somebody I might look up to, like Tom Myers. Yeah, that's cool, man. I I, I'm, I think we talked, and I said I'm flattered by the um, what Myers said. I'm flattered by what you said. I You said I'm well-rounded. I don't know. Maybe my my head looks huge on this video. Right, I, no pun that. intended. Maybe that's the well-rounded. But, um, <laughs> yeah, you listed off some venues I played recently. That's funny. It was like Brad Garrett's, and I think the last time I was there was like 2019, and then you were like Tavern's. You know, so I don't know. Oh, well, I don't know where Myers is playing or what he does or whatever, but. Well, that's perfect. We do want to jump into our first segment here, which is maybe you're a fan. And I hope you have some red cards to hand out this week. Maybe, maybe we're going to have to hand a red card to Jesters there, just ourselves. But we actually had some fan submissions for some red cards we've been stacking up. And we thought it'd be a great day to do that. Our first David Collins red card here comes in from an email from Matt O'Daniels. He says, I'd like to raise a red card to previous guest, Tom Myers. Can you please ask him when Dat Fan will be opening for him? Can he confirm <laughs> or deny these online rumors, please? Uh, well, I'm not sure, Matt, and I apologize that I wasn't able to ask him that question, but we tried to let people know that he was coming on the show and give people opportunity to send in questions. He just kind of missed the deadline, but a red card there for Tom Myers. Our next red card comes in from Julian Smith. He states... That was pretty messed up the way they kicked you off the Blind Mike Project last week. Referring to the first week of October there. You should give Blind Mike a red card. You know, and I'm half tempted to not allow Julian here to get that red card because we had more technical issues this morning when trying to appear again on the Blind Mike Project. Although that first week of October, I don't think was much my fault. So we will give the Blind Mike Project today a red card. Speaking of the Blind Mike Project, we're going to be starting a radio show there this week. I think this should air right before that episode premieres, 7.30 a.m. Eastern every Wednesday on the Blind Mike Project. Our last red card here is from Marsha Witt, a red card for Troy Rigdon. Does he need to use the F-bomb every other word? Imagine trying to count them all. Do you know Troy Rigdon? I don't know him, no. He's a local comedian here, North Dubuque and East Dubuque in the Illinois area. And he does, he does use a lot of vulgarity there. So we'll give Troy Rigdon a red card. Do you have any red cards you want to hand out this week, Tom? Um, no, it's like a red card like soccer. You know, we get that. Isn't that interesting? I don't think that's the first time I've heard that. But it's a red card. It's a violation. A violation? No. <laughs> Not any that I can think of. Well, that's pretty wholesome there. Do you think a lot of your comedy that you do is wholesome? A lot of the comedy that I do is wholesome. No, probably not. I mean, I play, you know, like you said, taverns, bars, comedy clubs. Right. You know, it's supposed to be adult. You know, I think I think that there's not really a place for people to go so much. That's not, you know, comedy is the escape from kids and it's escape from the real world and that sort of thing. So, right. Well, that's a good way to put it there. And I don't mean to cut you off, but that means time for our first game. And you can tell even by that wrong siren, we're having a lot of issues with our assets behind the scenes today. It's really unfortunate. It's our first game today. I'm really excited for it. It's one of my personal favorites. You can consider yourself a joke writer. So our first game today is called Finish the Punchline. We're going to start a joke there. And you're going to have to finish that joke with the punchline. Are you ready to play, Tom? Finish the punchline. I think this is what I want to give a red card to. Well, that's probably fair. We've really been falling apart since we've lost Jerry. I think every episode since we've lost Jerry has been worse and worse issues. But that's Jerry all right. Let's, on let's the show. Rock. He actually went with the gas cap criminal. He stole our three. It was a lot, but we have the three back now, and we're happy about that. But why don't we jump into Tom, round one here? Round that's one nice. of Finish the Punchline. This joke is by Tom Myers. 
I was on my way down here, and I stopped at a convenience store. I'm waiting in line to pay, and the guy in front of me puts down a dozen donuts, two big bags of Doritos, one of those cheap one-gallon bottles of generic brand fruit punch, and a nasty old rotting banana. He turns to the clerk and says to him, my girlfriend just had an operation. She can only eat certain things. I look at him and go, yeah, right. What did she have a finish that punchline? That joke is way too long. That's a Myers joke. Right. Where did you, he said that or he tweeted that? Cause I didn't know that Twitter albums. even, what's that? He has four albums. I think this might be one of his better. Yeah, four jokes. Albums. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's too long of a joke. That's way too long. I think you've ran out of time there. Yeah, right. What did she have? A bong hit transplant? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It's bad. Oh, that's interesting. That's bad. That's Why don't we bad. jump into round two here? Maybe this one will make sense. That's that's a pretty scathing review of a Tom Myers joke. Well, you can tell Tom I said that. I'm sure he'll watch. He'll hear about he's it. He's a I friend, but that's, that's, that's like, that's bad. Perfect. Why don't we jump into round two here? Do you know Ray DeVito? He's a Philadelphia, Cleveland. No, Cleveland. That's where he's from. I don't know Ray DeVito, but you had him on the show, right? Right, exactly. He was coming to Dubuque there to perform at the formerly what was just Jester's Lounge there. This next joke is Ray DeVito. Wow. Anxiety and ADHD? You must have been bouncing off the walls as a kid. How did your parents handle that? Finish that punchline. How did your parents handle that? Right. Um, and I'm supposed to do what? I'm supposed to like guess what he said? Right. You finish his joke. Oh, <laughs> I don't know, dude. I, I feel like you don't even need me for this show. Like, I feel like I thought we were doing like an interview or something like that. Oh, well, that comes and, after the first game. I'd love to, I have a lot of questions for you today, but you know, this is a nice way to warm up and then we get to play a game and a lot of people really enjoy this game. It's finish the punchline. Yeah. You, you finish it for me. I don't know. How did your parents handle that? They hit me. Yeah, okay. We just have one round left here. Why don't we jump into round three? <laughs> Andy Malafarina. You guys know Call of Duty? Call of Duty is a war game, and they put out the new one like every two years. So there's different installments, and I'm playing an old, old one, and I've been playing Call of Duty World War II. It's so fun, and since it's an old game, I can't quit playing. That's the weirdest part about the game. I didn't realize that. Finish that punchline. I've been playing I don't Call know, of Duty World like War II. You other people's jokes. Usually that's a big part of comedy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, dude. Oh, well, it's a, these are from their albums there. That was sure. World War. I didn't realize that World War II was so much fun. Andy Malfarina is a great guy. We've had Andy Malfarina on the show, a great friend of the show. He actually spends a lot of time these days with Tyler Wayne. Isn't that interesting? Do you know Tyler Meyerhoff? Now he goes by Tyler Wayne. Oh, uh, he changed his name. Right, in Austin there, and he's, and he's having a lot of fun and working with some great people. So you don't also do comedy, though. You work in radio occasionally. Is that right? Oh, I go on the radio, yeah, on Tuesday mornings on Rock 108. And as a comedian that's been doing this for a long time, I suppose you've been you've been doing that a long time. I get, a lot of newer comedians, I don't think, go on the radio as much as it was such a such a common thing maybe 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Like usually sometimes if you're playing on the road, they'll have you go on. But the guy's a friend. And so I go on on Tuesday mornings. Right. That's Rock 108 in where are they located? They're somewhere in northern Iowa. But it's Brian Marshall. And maybe I'm going to be I was interested in getting on that show for the reality show at some point. We haven't really done that up to this point. But I noticed looking at your background, you've you've actually been done radio with a pretty famous people in the past. The first one I noticed was Man Cow TV. This reminds me a lot of the Man Cow show. This is that's all over the place. <laughs> Did you have a good time? That was an interesting one because that's such a such a well known. That's a real household name, Man Cow. Yeah, what was your experience yeah. like that? It was weird. Like, first of all, it's a nice studio. Like, it's at like at the time it was on like. Michigan Avenue. He had this big, I think he was at Fox studios or something like that or whatever wow. channel he was with, but it was at like, you pull up and it's like Michigan Avenue. So it's super nice. And then you'd get in there and there was like a guy in a lobster costume and then like a girl in a bikini with a Hillary mask on. And it was just, it was chaos. Dude. It was ADD, 
ADD oh, it sounds news. like the Howard Stern studio or something like that. And there was yeah, a, maybe a polar opposite of that, I must say. But the, another interesting one, and not a lot of people are really going to believe this because so few people have probably appeared on this next one here. But you've worked with Red Bar Radio, which is somebody we've talked about, I think, a year ago. We had some sort of incidents where we had some sort of context to bring him up. But you were sure. on with Mike David Red Bar. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. Mike David was super cool to me, man. He's had me on a couple of times. I was young when I did that because I was in Chicago all the time. It was in Chicago back when he was in Chicago. I don't think he's located there anymore, but it was 2012 and 2014. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating, the people that you might run into. And not to mention, of course, in comedy, you've worked with the people from Jackass and other other big shows like that. But when it comes to radio, those were a couple of the names that really kind of fascinated me. Who are the, probably the biggest name that you or the, the happiest person that you got to work with over the years? Well, um, yeah, probably Tom Myers was was up there. My boy Matt Ferry, he was up there. Oh, Matt, Matt Ferry, not, of course, is you, our co-host here. You you haven't jumped in yet. What's the deal, dude? Well, <laughs> you know, he has a vital part to play on the show here, and we're glad to have a feel co-host free to jump in at any time, Mike or Matt. Over the last Jesus. couple of years, you wouldn't imagine how many co-hosts that we've auditioned, and and Matt's really been able to stick around here. How would you describe your style of comedy? My style, um, normally not this. I feel like you threw me with those games, dude. Normally I'm, I'm pretty fluid right. and, uh, and whatnot, but then, uh, yeah, asking me to finish other people's punchlines is like, well, you probably... may not consider yourself a, a joke writer. Like Tom Myers really considered himself a joke writer. We've had a comedian on the show once that described themselves as a rant comedian, which I thought was mm -hmm. interesting. Do you, maybe you're a storyteller. What do you, what do you think your kind of style is on stage? I've heard that. And I've seen you before. You're somebody that you might say, when when Tom gets off a of stage, he knows the whole front row's name and maybe maybe what they do for a living too. You really get to know your audience, and that's what I want to ask you about when it comes to your special. Do we see any crowd work on Tom Garland selling out? Yeah, you do. Yeah, we did some crowd work. The crowd work's fun. I always think that's one of the better ways to get the crowd going. Right. Well, it's very interesting to to hear that on a special. You really don't see that, and it's it's. We joked about this, I believe, on our radio show last week because we were teasing having you on the show. And I, I, I had a 20 second clip of you that I found and it it ended up being you ripping on three people and you combined it in an improvisational way of what they were doing for a living. And I said, wow, that's, you know, you might say, what do you think you're known for? Do you think that that works? Are you a crowd work comedian? Yeah, I guess so. You know, when I started doing a lot of it, I was in Las Vegas and in Las Vegas, they're all tourists. So I think that they want to be a part of the show and that right. they get, you know, they're on vacation and stuff like that. If you do that in Iowa, sometimes they're like, why is this guy talking to me? So yeah, it's just a little standoffish. Maybe they're a little, little more concerned. Yeah, they just, they see a lot of material out, out West. I feel like, and you see it on probably on Instagram or TikTok or whatever. Like there's lots of people that do that. So that's not right. necessarily privy or special to me um but you know the more that you see that online the more people are doing it which is cool um but, and then the uh, audience might expect it a little more he's probably yeah. right in iowa they're probably used to if, a, if somebody's doing that it's the priest and they say oh no don't signal me out yeah yeah definitely i want to ask you some more of these questions here but we are kind of getting towards the end of our show of course and we have a lot of emails that i wanted to catch up on today do you take him? Do you do a podcast or anything like that, Tom? Garland? No, I don't. No, you, do you can hear me on Tuesday. I'm sorry. What'd you say? Oh, you hear you on Tuesday. That's probably the radio yep, show on Marshall 108 K Rock. On Tuesday. Yep. On uh, on it's uh, it's Rock 108. Yeah. Oh, I get that mixed up. I formerly of KMKF 1015 K Rock in Manhattan, Kansas. That's cool. I would I would probably leave the word Kansas off the end of that. Like, uh, just say Manhattan. That'd be sound so much cooler. Oh, well, to some people, they don't even hear the last word, but I try to strike everybody as honest there. Well, I only ask, do you do anything on TikTok or anything like that? Are you are you active on any social medias? Where can people find you? No, I'm. you can find me. It's just Tom Garland. I'm on Instagram and Facebook. Perfect. And Al, many of your things are on Tubi. And like I said, I love that documentary. I did Thank watch you. that comedy special, but it ended up being more in the background. And I don't want to say anything about it because I don't think I could even I don't think I could defend any of my statements. But I do look forward to watching it again there. Well, I wanted to jump into our next segment, David Collins' call-ins and emails. What are you doing? I'm emailing David Collins. And our first email today comes in from Charles in Tulsa. He says, hi, David. 
Tom Myers may have been the funniest person you've had on the show. Night and day from Ray DeVito. Tom has been on fire covering Tony Hinchcliffe and his controversial comments at the Trump rally at MSG. Can't wait to hear Tom's takes on Trump for the next four years after the election. Looking forward to DT's DC for the election coverage. Keep on keeping on. Charles from Tulsa. Thanks so much for that email, Charles. And we do have a radio show there. That's what he was referring to. And we're going to be doing some street interviews in Des Moines and then bringing those at 6.30 a.m. for the next morning of the radio show. We thought that would be a great way to cover the election there. Our next email here comes in from Matt O'Daniel, Matt O'Daniels in South Carolina. He wrote what he wrote for the red cards. And then he wrote, P.S., the KU football team can rock chalk their way to Lawrence with that brutal loss on K-State in the Sunflower Showdown. And thanks for that full email, Matt O'Daniels. That used to be something Jerry would know more about. I don't really follow those sports. Matt, I can see why you don't talk much on this show. Like, <laughs> there's not really like a great place to jump in, is there? Well, I'm Got sure it. a lot of our audience is talking to the screen. Oh, there's a lot of interaction there. They write emails. People have something to say. This yeah. last email here comes like in that from- first, That first email was definitely from Tom Myers. Do you that think so? Like, yeah, I do think so. It was like, can't wait to hear more Tom Myers. That was probably from Tom. Well, Tom did say, he's one of our few guests that at the end of the show said, I'd love to come back, invite me on any time. Which you don't <laughs> have to be guest. I bet he was the only fucking guest that wants to come back on this show, David. Oh, and yeah. I love, you know, I love you, bro. But like, how many repeat guests have you had come back? I think three, but we don't usually do that. And they've, everybody that we've asked has, has gracefully said yes. Yeah, I, I regret that decision. Like, oh, I mean, that. Ooh, we get blocked easily. sometimes when it comes to the initial ask. But once they're on the show, people seem to enjoy themselves. Brad yeah. Logan wrote into the show. Hello, DC 30. My ribs, you do tickle. Best regards from the Midwest, but east of you. Well, thanks so much for that nice email, Brad Logan. Do you, does anybody reach out after comedy shows and say nice things to you? Oh, sometimes. Yeah. Probably not after this one. Oh, well, this I think after this, you're gonna, you're, hopefully you'll get some followers on Instagram there and we'll be doing that. You know, I was actually, I forgot exactly the context there, but we did get Troy Rigdon, I think, some followers after doing the Blind Mike Project. Anyway, that sound means, of course, it is time for our last game. And our last game we have just for you because he Las Vegas. Tom Garland spent a lot of time in Las Vegas there. So we thought we'd play some time American history trivia. So why not play today Las Vegas history trivia? There'll be some multiple choice questions about Las Vegas and its history. Are you ready to play Las Vegas history trivia? Sure. That's perfect. Why don't we jump into round one here? What year was Las Vegas founded? 1885, 1895, 1905, or 1915? Uh, go with C. What was that, 1905? That's exactly right. 1905. Hey. How'd you know that? I got lucky. Oh, it was just a guess. You know, I wonder, you know, a lot of people, we spent some time in Boston. It seems a lot of people in Boston really know their history about the area there. And I wonder if that's the same in other big cities like Las Vegas. Yeah, that probably makes sense in Boston. There's not really such thing in history. In, Ve in Vegas, they blow the history up. Right. And once you leave, you probably aren't supposed to talk about it. Why don't we jump into round two here? Which lake surrounding Las Vegas is the largest recreation area? Which lake surrounding Las Vegas is the largest recreation area? Is it Lake Jacqueline, Lake Mead, Lake Sarah, or Lake Harriet? I'll go with Lake Mead. Lake Mead? What do you know about Lake Mead? I know they found some bodies down there recently. Did you see that? Wow. No, we didn't see that. And that would have been a great thing to cover for World News. It would have been topical since we're going to be talking about it later in the show. But that was Lake Mead. Lake oh, Mead yeah. is the largest recreation area. It's a lake where I think they're doing jet skiing and fun things like that and not so much a nature area. Is that accurate? Yeah, probably some jet skiing, probably some dumping of bodies. There was like, they, they found people in drums at the bottom of Lake Mead when it dried up. Wow, snare or bass? <laughs> Why don't we jump that into was, round That three? was funny. That's the first good joke of this whole show. Round three. What Las Vegas hotel and casino located in Las Vegas, Nevada, at the southern end of the Strip, is owned by MGM Resorts and has an Egyptian theme 
complete with a pyramid and a sphinx? Is it the MGM Grand, the Luxor, the Bellagio Hotel and Casino, or Caesar's Palace? That's the Luxor. Wow. You really do know your Las Vegas history there. That's perfect, Tom Garland. That was Las Vegas history trivia. What do you think about that game? Before Between that game and the first game, which one was your favorite? That one's a little better. They all suck, but that one was a little better. I well, feel I'll tell like you, you know, the fans right of the direction. show might give a little pushback on that because I think we do have some great games. Next week, we're going to have, hopefully, if all things go well, we haven't confirmed, so I don't want to spoil anything there. But we have a great guest, and he's a bit of an impressionist, and we want to bring back what dead guy is Dan doing? Where Dan McCullough does an impression, and they have to guess what dead guy is Dan doing? Oh, I like Dan McCullough. He's coming on your show. Oh, he sends in some voicemails or he does a lot of work in the background with the games sometimes. So it's okay. a little he's gonna not going to like what you said about the games, but that's no problem. Tom Garland, everybody. And you can find his great documentary on Tubi and his special Tom Garland selling out, both of which I did very much enjoy. Tom Garland, did you have a nice time on the show today? Not at all. But thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, it was great to have you. Thanks so much. That's <laughs> perfect. Boy, what a great episode. Everybody listening. I've been David Collins and you've been the best. David Collins. 30 minutes. Show with David Collins.